Walt Disney Imagineering is the creative arm for the Walt Disney Company that creates the theme parks all around the world. We dream it up, we come up with the ideas, and we design it, and we build it. I felt that there should be some kind of an amusement enterprise built where that the parents and the children could uh, have fun together. In 1955, Walt Disney, famed for creating such timeless and memorable animated feature films as Cinderella and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, opened what became known as the happiest place on earth. To help realize the Disneyland theme park, he created Walt Disney Imagineering, a group of artists and craftspeople who design and create Disney-themed venues. It all started from a daddy with two daughters wondering where he could take them, where he could have a little fun with them, too. Being the first of its kind, Disneyland, with its differently themed lands, live visits from animated characters, and its host of remarkable innovations in animatronics was a smash hit. The park faced its share of opening troubles, like malfunctioning water fountains on a brutally hot opening day, but overall it was operating safely on home turf in Anaheim, California. Sixteen years later, the one and only happiest place on Earth began appearing in other places on Earth. The first expansion to Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida, created new opportunities for Imagineering to experiment. And they created attractions like Epcot Center, a taste of cultures from all over the world. The results drew fans from across the globe. But later iterations of the park in Europe and Asia are the first real experiments in bringing Disney entertainment directly and personally to a global audience right in their front yard. But how does a company like Disney preserve its fundamental message and still cater to the wildly varying tastes of different world cultures? Well, it takes a good bit of Imagineering. The Disney brand works so well because at its core, the brand is about very human traits, things that resonate across the human experience. There are stories about family, there are stories about humor, about our fears, and those kind of translate across all languages and all cultures. Every time a child walks into a Disney resort in Europe or Asia, they are participating in global trade. A company like Disney has a profound impact on a new market, financially and culturally. With the U.S. representing only 5% of the world population, there are good reasons for Disney to seek to enter new markets. The Walt Disney Company has three company-wide strategic priorities, creativity and innovation, the application of technology, and global expansion. In return, our guests get unique, one-of-a-kind, and very memorable uh, experiences that they will uh, relive for the rest of their lives. But entering a new market like China, for example, is not as simple as setting up a theme park and opening the gates. A company may experience barriers to trade like language and cultural differences, political challenges, and the need to deal in foreign currencies. From a cultural standpoint, Hong Kong Disneyland's Tomorrowland provided a particularly creative challenge for the Imagineers. But how are we going to do this? How are we going to present Tomorrowland? These people here are living in it. It's a city of glass and steel, uh, beautiful lighting, moving sidewalks, air-conditioned covered walkways, a great public transportation system. And so we decided to really take the story of Tomorrowland off planet Earth and move it to you know, ostensibly some planet far away in the galaxy. The opening of a Disneyland in China is a win-win situation. Disney brings its family-oriented entertainment to a new market, and Hong Kong enjoys both the fresh experience and foreign appeal of Disneyland, as well as a strong stimulation to its local economy in the form of tourism. In fact, the Hong Kong government played a major role in helping Hong Kong Disneyland to become a reality. Obviously, they are an investor in the park, but they also took the lead role in creating the landfill on w in which the park and resort are built. They also were responsible for all of the infrastructure to support the operation of the resort. To actually build a Disney theme park takes both imagination and engineering, or Imagineering. But where do Imagineers come from? Certainly Disney has its own staff. Entering a local market gives you both a challenge and an opportunity. While the design fundamentally takes place in Glendale, we hire additional people in Hong Kong. And I'm talking about architects, engineers, 
um, set designers. There's there's really no way I I don't think that we could bring all of the people from California. Plus, you don't want to do that. You want to incorporate the local talents. You identify the best people that you can while the project is being designed and built, and then you keep the cream of the crop uh, on staff, and they become part of the legacy moving forward for Imagineering based locally in that area. But building the park is only half the battle. The Imagineers have to be sensitive to the differences in the needs of each market, and that sometimes means not assuming too much, because a market's expectations can be unexpected. While the park is coming up out of the ground, we begin to get kind of a sense of where we ought to be going with food and where we ought to be going with language. One might think that in France, we wouldn't want to have American cuisine, that they'd want to have their own local indigenous cuisine. It is kind of the culinary capital of the world. But in fact, we found out that they do want a little bit more than what we were offering. They do want the burgers and they want what we call the grazing food, the food that people can have um, as they walk through the park. Goodbye, Mr. Trashcan. Goodbye. I miss you. All in all, every Disneyland is both a uniquely local experience and an entertainment very faithful to the Disney tradition. No matter where on earth Disney and the Imagineers go, they have to achieve both goals. It's a small world after all. The Disney theme park experience is so loved because it allows our guests for at least a day to play in a world of their imagination. And we create these great stages, these worlds that are filled with uh, fantasy imagery and uh, optimistic look at the future and you get to be a player in that world for a day. When first seeking to do business in a foreign land, job one is learning the culture. You want to maintain your integrity as a company, but you must also respect the sensitivities of your market. In Hong Kong, for example, they were careful to honor the ancient Chinese practice of achieving harmony with the environment. We had a feng shui consultant who worked with us all the way through to help us with uh, many of those key decisions and orientations. Um, the positioning of hotels, the positioning of the promenade, where the train comes in, uh, where the park and the resort sits overall with respect to the South China Sea and the hills in the background. Another thing in Japan, especially um, gift giving is a really big part of their culture so most of our shops are very very popular and have a, a very high volume of guest traffic so we actually have to have more cash registers we have to have more queuing to account for that there are simpler traditions to honor as well such as the greater affinity that the asian market has for taking photographs we put so much attention into everything whether it's a railing a lamppost a mailbox, uh, a park bench, every one of those little moments that we do, it's, it's very, um, you know, it's very comforting to know that, that people are, are caring and appreciating for what we do. Imagineering will continue to embrace the challenge of bringing Disney entertainment to new places around the world, carrying the lessons that it's learned elsewhere. But Imagineers will also have to use the insight they've gained to anticipate challenges that have not yet proven very difficult. Hong Kong has a diverse history having been a British protectorate. It has a free market economy, a great deal of Western influence, and of course the predominant language was English. In other Asian markets, however, there are many different cultural uh, differences that we must encounter and adapt to, and probably the most significant difference is one of language. But Imagineering is also open to ideas that it hasn't thought of. The company collects a great deal of feedback after a park like Tokyo Disneyland opens for use in future projects or to improve current venues. And of course the internet is one way to collect such feedback. We do use the internet for feedback, mostly listening to, in Japan, our guests that are giving us information about, about trends and, and, and things that are popular in the culture at the time. Um, and we use that information more to adjust what we call the software, which is our entertainment and our special events. But I think at the core of what we deliver in our attractions, they have to be universal. Events can be timely. I think our core attractions have to be timeless. And uh, send a good message about uh, what the world is about, that, that it's optimistic.